Game Ranks presents 10 things gamers' parents need to know. Yes, we're running a little bit of an advice column here, so listen up, parents. Of course, some parents out there are totally cool with gaming, but we're here to talk about the newbies. This list is a group effort made by parents of gamers, and just some gamers like me with a lot of opinions. So let's get started off with number 10. First, we want to provide a little bit of encouragement. Parents, listen, you're never too old to game yourself. Give it a try. Maybe we're a little biased, but it's definitely one of the best ways you can have fun. And the average age of a gamer is a lot higher than you think. Just think about all the people who grew up on Atari, Nintendo, and arcade games, who went on to still play video games and have fun in their spare time. That could be you. Don't think just because you're over the hill you can't try and engage in games with your friends and family. Because you totally can, and honestly, your kids will love you for it. If you have a kid who's a gamer, he's often spending a lot of his time playing games, and that's time you're not spending with them. So get over yourself thinking you're too old for video games and give it a try. Honestly, you might have some fun and maybe you'll thank us. Number nine, mom, dad, don't embarrass us on social media. Listen, if you're on Facebook and you see us posting about Uncharted or Mass Effect 4 or a new Street Fighter or something we're freaking out about and you have no idea what we're talking about, just keep scrolling. You don't need to comment on, what are you talking about? Oh, there's so many other things to care about, like Obama, blah, blah, blah. We don't care, just get out of here. This post was clearly intended for people who know about video games. So like I said, move along. And look, maybe sometimes we want to dress up like our favorite video game character. It's not a big deal, leave us alone. Don't worry about how much money we spent on that replica Keyblade. It's not like we're trying to not include you or be mean or anything, but we're just trying to save you the trouble. Because really, if you comment on a post about Mass Effect 4 and you expect me to explain Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 to you, you better sit down and pull up a chair. And number eight, listen, don't make assumptions about what we're playing just by walking in the room for two seconds. You can't get an idea of a game we're playing just by glancing at the TV for a brief second. Because really, we can explain, and there's so much more to the game than that, so just give it a chance. You know, we're not always just playing Super Mario. There's a lot of really cool experiences out there, and a lot of fun and engaging games. It could also be a game we're incredibly invested in, so don't walk into the room and dismiss it. Because that's really a huge buzzkill. It's just like if we walk in while you were watching a movie, during a climactic or emotional dramatic scene, and we just start making fun of it. How would you like that? At number seven, let's cover a little consumer education. Listen, mom and dad. Not all games work on every platform. You can't walk into the store and buy an Xbox game to play it on your son's PS3. It just doesn't work like that. There's a few things you have to learn, especially if you're gonna be spending a chunk of change on these games, especially during Christmas or the holidays. You should at least educate yourself on what you're buying so you don't make your kid unhappy and make your wallet empty. Just take a few minutes of Googling and figure out the difference between the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. No, the Xbox One didn't come first. And also figure out the difference between the Wii and the Wii U. No, the Wii U isn't just an iPad controller. <laughs> and Skylanders, Disney and Infinity and Amiibos, uh, good luck with that. Just figure this shit out, it only takes a second and you'll definitely save some embarrassment at the electronics store. At number six, listen parents, if your child moves out and he leaves some stuff behind, keep in mind, all gaming stuff isn't junk, especially the older things. Don't throw it out, it's not garbage, please, for the love of God. And really, seriously, please, if you are gonna sell stuff, put it out on a garage sale or something, at least research the stuff before you sell it off. Because you could have something really rare on your hands, like an old Nintendo cartridge that's worth hundreds, and you just give it to some Joe Schmo at the garage sale for two bucks. And honestly, we probably shouldn't even be having this conversation. You should ask your son or daughter before you sell their shit, come on. There's so many stories out there about parents who sold their child's older stuff off, whether it's a video game or a comic, only to realize later that it was incredibly rare and worth a ton of money. You don't want that to happen to you. Trust us. At number five, we're gonna get really advice -y here. Try and get involved in your child's hobbies. Yes, this is a bit of an offshoot from number 10 about how you're never too old to try games, but also if you take the time to spend time with your kids as they're enjoying their hobby and getting to know each other and know how each other feels about different things in gaming, it'll go a long way with your relationship and the respect you have for each other. You know, maybe if you think video games are just violent, vile things that make your kids go crazy, why don't you take a step back, sit down with your kid, and let him show you what he's playing all day? Because listen, even at the end of the day, you still decide video games aren't right for your kid, which I disagree with you, but you gotta do what you gotta do. At least if you actually had a dialogue with your child about the game, maybe they'll respect your decision a little bit more and make the whole process a little less painful for both of you. At number four, parents, listen very closely. It's not okay to buy an M-rated game for your kids. Yes, your kid will drag you to the store and ask you to buy the newest violent video game, and the cashier goes, well, excuse me, this game is actually intended for mature audiences of 18 years or older, and you say, yeah, 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 whatever. Maybe take a step back and think about it for a second and think about what you're buying your child. This goes back to what I was saying before about doing research about what you're buying your kids. Going to a store and buying an M-rated game for your kids, you're honestly better off just letting the kid acquire the game through other means under your nose, because that always works. That's 
that's how I play Grand Theft Auto 3. But most importantly, it really does go back on just taking a second to educate yourself on what you're buying and what you're being aware of and what you're being outraged by. And don't just follow the media that'll hop on a bandwagon and tell you one particular game is bad. Be more aware than that because listen, I gotta tell you something. There's a lot worse games out there that you don't even know about that your kid might be playing right now. So definitely figure that out. And number three, let's talk about online gameplay. Yes, the person we're playing with online is really another person in another part of the world. And no, that's not cause for immediately distrusting them. People make friends on the internet all the time. That being said, like any other online community, the gaming community does have its share of bad apples, so you gotta pay attention. Do pay attention to the groups your kids are joining and who he's talking to and playing with on a daily basis. But on the other hand, try and give your son or daughter the benefit of the doubt that they're making friends. They're not just connected to a bunch of weirdos somewhere else that you can't see. Legitimate friendships do actually develop through video games, and be aware of that. Be cautious, but be aware of that. Oh, and definitely make sure your child isn't a troll. We don't want you to be too controlling over your son or daughter's internet life, but please, for the love of God, just make sure they're not just a hate cloud shitstorm spreading vast, awful, terrible, mean, nasty opinions and insults across the internet. Because we already have enough of that, and children are our future. And through you being proactive, you can help change that. And number two, listen, Mom, I know it's dinner time, but we can't pause an online game. An online game is live and in the moment and with players across the world. And we can't just put that on hold, especially if we're in the middle of a tense Street Fighter online match or mid-running play in Madden or in the middle of a tense 1v1 in Call of Duty or Rocket League. So just give us a minute and let us finish up, okay? Oh, and also video games have cutscenes. Some of them are really long. Listen, I've been watching this Metal Gear Solid 4 cutscene for a half hour now and I'm not gonna walk out on it just because dinner's ready. Give me another 10 minutes. I can't pause the thing. And that's really frustrating. Thankfully, they are adding pause features to game cutscenes, but still, you can't pause every game. And at number one, parents, you need to understand this. Not every video game is called a Nintendo. There's a lot more than just Nintendo and Atari now. We have the Neo Geo, the Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, the Atari Jaguar, the 3DO, the Sega Saturn, the Dreamcast, the PS2, the GameCube, the Xbox, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the PS3, the PS4, the Wii, the Wii U, the Nintendo 3DS, the DS, the DSi, the 3DS XL. I can go on and on. There's just so many video games out there and they're not all just called Nintendo. And they're not just all called Nintendo. That's so frustrating. You can't do that. Or personally, with my parents, they try and be a little more progressive. They call everything the PlayStation. Yes, the PlayStation. Parents, listen, video games are bigger than they've ever been. It's a brave new world out there and an exciting medium full of fun, action, adventure, drama, friendships, and basically anything else you can think of in any medium. So pay attention, be receptive, be accepting, be educated, and don't be afraid of letting your children have a little bit of fun. So those are 10 things we think parents of gamers absolutely need to know. This list is for everyone, whether it's a gamer or their parents. And we want to hear from both of you guys, people who play video games. What are some gripes you have with your parents? What are some things you wish your parents knew about your video game hobby? And parents, if there are any parents who are watching this video, uh, welcome, hello, this is the internet, nice to have you here. We want to know what you think about this list and how you engage in your child's hobby. Any sanctions you impose or ways you try and get involved, let us know in the comments. If you learned a thing or two in this video, click the like button because it really helps us out. It's almost like giving us a tip. Listen, I don't have any kids, but I work with a lot of people who have kids so that's how we made this list but you can follow me on twitter and talk about this stuff at jake baldino and if you are new you can subscribe because we do videos like this every day but whether you're new or not thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time